Hi, it's Tom, and in this video we're going to create a new class called Cartesian Point. And then we're going to demonstrate that class by uh, creating an array of Cartesian Point objects. So my plan for the uh, class, this is similar to the uh, very first lab that we did at the very beginning of the course, uh, but it's incorporating a, a lot more um, of the concepts that we did uh, throughout the course. At uh, any rate, a Cartesian point is um, uh, basically an x and a y coordinate. And uh, for the purposes of this class, I've defined as the uh, data members my x, which will be an integer, and my y, which is also an integer. Uh, these are going to be private in the class, um, so I will have uh, accessors and mutators to manipulate these uh, two data members. Um, Cartesian point has a couple of constructors, a default constructor, which will set the X and the Y, um, as well as a parameterized uh, constructor, constructor that will set the X and the Y to specified parameters. There's, uh, in terms of mutators, there's a set X and a set Y, which sets X and Y uh, to the parameters, as well as a set point, which will allow the client programmer to uh, set the X and the Y uh, uh, in one step. In terms of um, accessors, we have uh, get x and get y, which are uh, very simple. Um, and then we also have get distance two. Uh, in this case, what this uh, method is supposed to do is take a second point and return the distance between this point and the point that we pass in uh, as an argument. And then finally, there's a, a two string method which will display the Cartesian point or I should say build a string which will uh, 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 feature the, the X and the Y uh, formatted in a particular way. So let's look at the code. So to start us off, I, uh, I basically just have some comments, my includes, and just the very basic framework of uh, both the Cartesian point class um, and uh, uh, a shell of a main just with some comments about what I want to do in it. Um, so, to develop the Cartesian point uh, class, um, first off, uh, what I did is I defined the private data members, okay, so the my x and my y uh, variables to represent the uh, x-axis and y-axis uh, values. So let's deal with uh, construction to begin with, okay, so underneath the uh, public section in my class declaration, um, I'll code the constructor uh, method. Okay, so I've just pasted it in here. So, uh, just a little review, a constructor is used to initialize objects, always the same name as the class, never has a return type, and it's automatically called when an object is instantiated. Um, the key thing a constructor should do is set each uh, value, each data member, um, to a, a set value. Um, so I said in my plan that I would have both a default and a parameterized constructor, um, and I've actually achieved this really with one method that acts as, as both um, because uh, I pass two parameters, an integer called uh, x and an integer called y, but I have default arguments for these two parameters. So if the client programmer doesn't specify what the x and y values should be, the default is uh, one and one. Now I'm using the um, uh, initialization list uh, uh, syntax here um, it's because there is really no validation beyond um, uh, you know, uh, x and y being integers, which is the only thing they can be based on these parameters. Um, so I'm initializing my x to x and my y to y, and there's really nothing else to do in the constructor. Uh, next, let's deal with the accessors. Okay, first off, we'll deal with the very simplest ones, the get x and get y. So an accessor uh, just to remind you, is used to query the state of an object. It never modifies the object, and you should, uh, uh, as a style rule here, specify const at the end of the function prototype or header. Method prototype or header, I should say. Um, so get x returns the integer. The integer that it returns is the my x value, okay? and it's an accessor, so it's const. And I've used uh, inlining here because it's really just a short little function. There's, again, no, uh, no validation or anything required. Next, we'll deal with the get dis distance to accessor. Okay, so again, what this does is it returns a double, which is the distance between two points. Um, and it's gonna calculate that distance based on the X and Y values of this object, 
um, compared to uh, or uh, using a formula with the X and Y values from a second Cartesian point, which we're passing in as uh, an argument. Okay. Uh, notice I still have const. Um, there's a little bit to this. I'm not going to inline uh, this particular uh, method. Uh, so I just put the uh, function prototype in the uh, class declaration section, and then I'll scroll down and we'll put the function body in the class definition section. So again, like the uh, very initial uh, lab, we, we actually did this calculation before right in main. Um, so I pass in my uh, second Cartesian point, it's called point two, and uh, uh, I'm basing this formula, um, I can refer to uh, my x, which is this object. Um, I could actually literally say this, uh, which is a pointer, um, I have to use a minus sign greater than uh, to, uh, because this is a pointer, um, that allows me to uh, do indirection on the object, this object, and get to my x. At uh, any rate, you don't need to, to put that in there, it's implied, but um, this is the, uh, the object that actually invokes this uh, method compared to the point two, which is my parameter. So uh, I decided to do it in stages. I calculated what the... Uh, uh, the delta or difference between the uh, x values were and the delta or distance between the y values. And then I simply return uh, the square root of the x delta squared uh, plus the y delta squared, which is, uh, you know, uh, the, the formula based on Pythagorean theorem. So next we'll add the, uh, the last accessor, which is the uh, two-string method. I'll prototype it here in the class uh, declaration section, and then we'll scroll down to the bottom and uh, add the actual method definition uh, down here. So to accomplish this, what I did was, uh, there's no parameters or anything, I created a string stream object, uh, which I've called string out, and I've built the string so that um, uh, there's a bracket, then the x value, then a comma, the y value, and an end bracket. And then I just return that string. Um, so I like using the uh, string stream object quite a bit, you'll notice from my programs, um, but that's basically how I accomplish that. Next, let's deal with the uh, mutators of the class. So I'll scroll back up to the top and uh, we'll add those in. Okay, I have them uh, already typed, so you don't need to watch me type too much. So again, mutators are used to change the state of the object. And um, generally, they should contain logic to ensure that the object remains in a valid state. Okay, um, and it typically they send they set some data member to a parameter. So I have a set x, a set y, and then the set point, which sets both the x and the y. Now, in this particular case, uh, there isn't a range of um, uh, of valid values. Okay, so there really is no validation I need to do. Um, x is an integer. It can only be an integer because that's what the parameter is. Um, so uh, I'm simply setting my x and my y in, in these various different mutators to the parameter values. Um, and again, I've inlined them here because they're not very complicated. Um, so that basically sums up the actual class. Um, next, what we'll do is we'll um, uh, code the main function to just test out some stuff uh, in our class. So I've already made a plan for main, and I've uh, uh, pasted it in here as uh, a comment. So in the declaration section, I want to create uh, a constant for the quantity of objects I want to create in an array, and I'll just do two of them. Uh, I want to create the actual array of objects, um, and then I'm going to have a couple of temporary input variables for uh, x and y, and I'm also going to have a variable to store the distance between two points. So let's uh, code that part. All right, so uh, just a constant integer. Um, to create an array, um, I just declare it like I would any other array, but the type is the name of the class rather than int or double or string. Okay, uh, I've called my temporary variables temp x and temp, temp y, and distance is distance. So now I want to deal with the uh, input loop. Uh, so for each object in the array, I want to get the coordinates from the user and uh, set this point, the, the point that I'm on, uh, to the user input. Okay, so let's code this loop. A for loop is ideal for traversing or moving through an array. I create a, a counter variable called point zero, while point is less than quantity. I know quantity is only two, so this probably doesn't seem uh, 
uh, like there's a lot of point to doing this in a loop, but I could change this to a larger number of points and it would still work. Point plus plus. Uh, I prompt the user and uh, I prompt them specifically for X and specifically for Y. I'm using my old uh, get valid double uh, functions from, from unit three just to uh, uh, do the type validation. I'm not worried about range in this particular case. Um, and oh, okay, get valid double. Actually, that should, probably should be uh, get valid int. So I will make that correction. Alrighty. Uh, once I have the temporary x and, and y values, I want to set the point. So um, I'm using the point array at position point. That is one of the objects. It's either object 0 or object 1. Dot, and then I just use my method. So I'm going to set the point using temp x and temp, temp y. Oh, I somehow deleted my processing comments. I'll put them back in here. For the processing, after I've got the uh, the two points with my input loop, I want to determine the distance between uh, the two points in the array. Okay, um, so we'll code the function call here. So distance is equal to, and then basically I take the first object, point array zero, and I call the not function. I said function before, but it's actually a method. Okay, I call the get distance to method. Okay, which is one of my accessors. What I pass as a parameter is the second point. Okay, so that goes down to uh, this method. Okay, my x will refer to uh, uh, the point array at position zero, um, and point two will refer to uh, the point at position one. Okay, so that's how that works. So it goes and does that calculation, and it returns the distance, and then basically all I need to do at that point is uh, show, show the results. So a simple C out statement, the distance between point array at position zero, two string, that gives me the nice formatted string there, and point array one, two string, gives me again with the brackets and stuff, is distance, okay? And uh, distance is a double, so I should probably put in uh, some kind of uh, a formatting before I output it. So I've just added this line in here, C out, fix set precision one, uh, so that the distance is uh, shown to one decimal place. So that's basically the uh, the program. Let's test it out. Okay, so I'm going to start point one off as uh, zero zero, and um, for the uh, second point, I'm going to go three and four. Uh, so the distance between zero zero and three and four is exactly five. I chose these coordinates because I I wanted to get a nice even number to make sure my formula was working. Uh, so I did the math on this before. I've got a three four five triangle here. Uh, we'll run it again with some different numbers to see if it makes sense. Uh, maybe I'll do uh, uh, a negative number. So negative 5, negative 5, and uh, 1, 1. And the distance between these points is 8.5, which is, uh, uh, I haven't done the math ahead of time, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that that works, and it seems to make sense. Um, there is some validation in this program, but it's coming from our uh, unit three function. So um, I don't I don't feel I need to test that too too much, um, but it does actually work. Okay. Um, so that basically is the uh, uh, Cartesian point class and uh, using those uh, Cartesian point objects in an array. Thank you very much.